Praise the Lord. This is Brother Julius Adewumi of the Gospel Distribution Ministry. Today I want to talk on Christ has already abolished death. As the Word of God has told us, I want to teach this from the scriptures. Let's open to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and see what the scripture told us that Christ has actually fulfilled by his death on the cross. And from there we'll be able to see that these are the promises of God that the scripture has already told us about. Hebrews chapter 2, let me read some few verses here. And Apostle Paul starting from verse 1 said, We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And I'm going to jump to verse 9. Now what Apostle Paul was trying to describe here is comparing what the Bible has said about God has told in the scripture that sit down at my right hand and I make the enemies their footstool. And he mentioned that even in chapter in chapter 1 and also in chapter 2. In chapter 1 verse 13 he said to which of the angels said at any time sit on my right hand and I make thy enemies their footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now what he was talking about in verse 5 of chapter 2 is that unto the angels he has not put in subjection the world to come, wherefore we speak, but one in a certain place testified that what is man, that is quoting the book of Psalm 8, that God has made, in verse 7, thou made us him to a little lower than the angels and has crowned him as man with glory and honor and did set him over the works of the hands. And you have thou has put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, under man, he left nothing that's not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. So Apostle Paul is comparing the scriptures with the situation, the state of human beings right now. So even though we do not see anything put under man as of then, as of now, he said, but we see Jesus. Christ Jesus came to demonstrate what we ought to be as children of God, that God has put all things under, under man. He said, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels by, for the suffering of death, crown with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Now what is the purpose of tasting death for every man? Verse 14 is where I'm going. Say for as much then as the children that's human beings are partakers of flesh and blood he also talking about Christ himself likewise took part of the same that is Christ took part of flesh and blood. God from heaven came down and took part of flesh and blood that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Listen to that again. Christ took part of flesh and blood so that through his own death he, Christ, might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. That is, Jesus Christ destroyed the devil through his own death on the cross. You say, well, you mean the devil has been destroyed? Yes, the devil has been destroyed. Now, that simply means the devil's business has been destroyed, shattered. He let captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. And after he destroyed them, what did the Bible say in verse 15? And he delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That is, Christ destroyed the devil and gave victory to we human beings that are in his image. And that's why he's calling everybody to come and be like him. And he will come and live inside you and give you the Holy Spirit. And that is how he abolished death for us. He tasted death so that he can abolish it. Now we say, well, if he has abolished it, how come that people are still dying? The just shall live by faith. And he's leading us to the last enemy, which is this physical death that shall be destroyed. And I'm going to explain that a little bit further. In the book of Psalm 110, verse 1, which Apostle Paul was quoting, which is Hebrew chapter 1, verse 13. Sit on my right until I make the enemies a fool. So God was actually prophesying about Christ and the body of Christ, the church, that He will make our enemies our fools too. And the Lord Jesus Christ will continue to reign in the heaven until that is done, until that is done for the church. 
the church is one that should put the enemy, the last enemy under our foot, under our foot too. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is that it is God that shall put the enemy under our foot too. That's what he's prophesying there. Sit down at my right hand till I make the enemy their foot too. Christ is seated in heaven. And we actually, the church is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You have to believe it by faith. And assume your position in, by faith that we are also seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then, ruling from heaven over all things on earth until we subdue even physical death. It is God until God subdued the physical death under his feet, under the feet of the church. Because we are the body of Christ. Christ is here. We are the body. And when he's under his feet, he's talking about under the feet of the church, the body of Christ. So remember that. Now, that is what Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 and verse 15 and 16 is telling us. Christ destroyed him that has the power of death. And he went further in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. All of these things, the scripture is confirming it to us that Christ actually has abolished physical death for human beings. But it's just like he, sin nature has been dealt with, but you have to believe it. You have to come to Christ and receive your new birth. For that sin nature to be removed from you, you have to believe and be born again. You see, the old world has been really forgiven according to the scriptures. God has forgiven the old world. Even the worst sinners that you see in the, on, on the death row, God has already forgiven him. All he has to do is to come to Jesus and accept that forgiveness and be born again and become a new creature in Christ Jesus. See, where does the Bible say God has forgiven the old world? God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I will read verse 17, 18, and 19. It said in verse 17, If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Now you say, he's only reconciling the Christians. The whole world is, is calling to himself, not just the Christians. We Christians are the ones that have accepted it and come. But he's inviting the whole world unto himself. God was in Christ reconciling us to himself and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that's why we are preaching the gospel. The ministry of reconciliation that we should keep reconciling men back to God. Verse 19 is where I'm going. He said to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world. You hear that? It's the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So, you see, what we are saying then is, the Lord God has already forgiven the whole world. But he's saying now we should reconcile them back to him by the preaching of the gospel. That is what Christ started, reconciling the world back to God. And he's giving us this ministry of reconciliation to keep telling them to come and be reconciled to God. Now, if you don't accept Christ, then you are lost. If you accept Christ and you are born again, then you are reconciled to God, you are saved, and you are not going to a lake of fire. But if you refuse to reconcile yourself to Christ until you die, you die in your sin, it's too late, it's over. Then you, the person will go to a lake of fire. So God is reconciling the world unto himself. So what I am saying then is, God has forgiven the whole world, but not the whole world has come to him. Not, all the, not the whole world is going to be saved because only those that are accepting Christ are being saved. Remember that. God is reconciling the world unto himself. One by one, we are to accept Christ. And then sin is dealt with. Similarly, God is saying he has abolished death, even the physical death, and he has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. Apostle Paul was telling us this, that these things that have been manifested from verse 9, he said, God has saved us and called us unto himself with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus, before the world began, this thing has been given to us, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So when Christ came, this thing that God has already planned from the foundation of the world, Christ has now brought it now to visibility when he manifested on earth. And he has told us that he has abolished death, just like he said, he's reconciling men from sin back to God. He has also abolished death, even the physical death. But it is still by you coming to Christ and accepting his salvation and believing in that promise of God that said, Verily, verily, 
I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Gospel of John chapter 8, verse 51. Christ is saying he has actually abolished death. He has destroyed him that has the power of death, that is the devil. And he has brought life and immortality to light, through the gospel, that is. This gospel, as he said, which you preach, is the good news. What is the good news? The good news is... God is reconciling the world back to himself, forgiving, forgetting everybody's sins and they come back to me and he wanted to give you life. The good news is when you accepted that, you change your nature from sinful nature to a holy person, you become a saint of God. The good news is sicknesses and diseases that have been plaguing mankind will be dealt with because Christ gave us authority when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So now that's the good news. The good news is, even sicknesses and diseases that have been plaguing mankind, God is giving you authority over it to subdue it, to have control over sickness and diseases when you have been changed and not born again experience that we are talking about. Sin being dealt with by the new birth. Sicknesses being dealt with by the authority Christ gave to you that is a believer that have been born again in that new birth. And then what is the good news? The good news is, even the physical death, sin, Diseases and sickness and death. Those are the enemies of mankind since Adam. The good news is Christ said he has actually abolished that physical death. He has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. The good news is that Christ tasted death for every man. And through his own taste of death, he destroyed him that has the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to bondage. So that's the good news. Sin has been dealt with. You have to come and accept Jesus Christ so that it will be dealt with in your own life. Sicknesses have been dealt with. You have to become a believer and you have authority over sicknesses. Death, physical death have been dealt with. If you accept Christ, then you shall live forever and never see death. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sin, he shall never see death. That is good news. The gospel of salvation is the good news. Salvation from sin, sicknesses, and from death, even the physical death. And the death is the lake of fire at the end. That is good news that God is reconciling man back to himself. Will you not accept this good news? And it's free. Come to him. Let me, let me read to you in the Gospel of John chapter 8, verse 51. Come to Jesus and begin to enjoy this blessing and benefits of salvation from sin, salvation from sickness and diseases, salvation from death, even physical death, that he has said you are to begin to come to him and believe his word and keep his saying so that you shall never even see this physical death. John chapter 8, verse 51. Christ was telling them this same thing that unless you believe that I am He, He said you will die in your sins. This is what He told them in John chapter 8, verse 51. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And He's talking about physical death. You say, Why do you know He's talking about physical death? Let's see the response of the Jews. Then said the Jews unto Him, Now we know that thou art a devil. Abraham is dead. Oh, we know Abraham is only dead physically. God sees Abraham wherever Abraham is right now. And the prophets are dead. And thou says, if a man keep my sin, shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Now, they were challenging the Lord Jesus Christ that you are talking about physical death. Abraham died. The prophets died. And you are saying, if anybody keep your sin, they will never see death. Who are you? Who are you to say that? They didn't know that he is God manifested in the flesh. They didn't believe that he is God manifested in the flesh. You see? And Jesus Christ didn't try to reverse what he said. In verse 54, Jesus answered, said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, for whom ye say that he is your God. That is, he's telling them that this God that whom you say is your God is my Father. He said, Yet you have not known him, but I know him. In verse 56, Jesus Christ went forward and said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Now you see what I just said. Abraham was dead physically, but it was not dead spiritually. He, wherever he is, his soul and spirit is somewhere in parallel. God could see him there. That's why Jesus Christ gave a story. To make you to see that Abraham is living. His physical body was in the grave, rotting. But he was he is living somewhere in paradise. Jesus Christ gave that story. Of a certain rich man. He didn't say that was this. It, people thought that was a parable. It was not a parable. Jesus Christ gave a, sat, a story. When he said a certain, certain means it was definitely true that that was really a, a real person that he was talking about. He said a certain rich man who dwelt sumptuously and was rich and 
and a beggar living by his gate wanted to be fed by crumbs that came out of this rich man's table and was not fed. Say, so after some time, the beggar died. The angels carried the beggar, which is the spirit and soul of this beggar, to Abraham's bosom, as his paradise called Abraham's bosom. He said, after a while, also the rich man also died. And he was buried. And in hell, which means his soul went to hell, because he never lived for God or not. And in, his, in hell, he lifted up his eyes and saw at a distance. He saw Abraham, which means Abraham was living. And he could actually recognize Abraham if he didn't know when he was alive. But he could recognize that was Abraham. Because in the spirit world, you just know. He said he knew, he, and he called Abraham. He said he also saw Lazarus, that beggar that was, he could recognize that beggar that was uh, sitting at his doorsteps, full of sores, that he wouldn't even help. Jesus Christ said it was a certain rich man and a certain beggar. So it was not a parable. Which means Abraham was living in paradise i'm just pointing that one out to make you to see that abraham was not was not dead spiritually he was physically dead but he is still alive jesus christ mentioned in john chapter 8 verse 56 that your father abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad but what was jesus christ referring today god could show him a vision to people in paradise in fact they many people have seen visions of heaven where they saw the dead partisans in a place where they can actually see us or not, and when God wanted them to see what's going on on the earth. So Abraham saw what was going on on earth, and he saw the days of Christ preaching around. That's what he was referring to. That Abraham, your father, saw my day, which means he saw Jesus Christ walking about preaching. And he said Abraham rejoiced because he knew about the promise of God before when he was still alive, that God was going to visit mankind through his seed. And that happened. And that's what Jesus Christ was referring to that in that verse 56 of John chapter 8. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. And you see the Jews responded to that and said, Thou art not yet 50 years old. They were looking at him as if he was just a young man of 30 something years old. He said, You are not yet 50 years old. Has thou seen Abraham? <laughs> Abraham was dead 2,000 years ago. And Jesus Christ said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. To make them to know that he was God from heaven that came down upon the earth and became like a baby. And that was difficult for many people to understand, to believe. But it's not difficult to believe. God is omnipresent. He could do anything he wants. He could come as a human being, as a baby. And you say, well, what? what you mean the throne in heaven was empty? Yes. Because he's everywhere. God is everywhere. So he can fold himself and become just a little baby and come into a womb. Because even people will tell you that even thousands of angels can stand on the on the on a pinhead. The millions of angels can stand on a pinhead because time and space is is nothing when it comes to the spirit things. But God manifested as man. That's what the Bible tells us. God came as human being and dwelt among us, and He was preached unto the Gentiles, and He went up into glory. Let me read that to you according to what Apostle Paul said in first letter of. Paul to Timothy chapter 3. He says a mystery. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 said, Great is this mystery of God. It was interpreted to mean godliness. Verse 16 said, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God, the mighty God, was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels. Angels watch what's going on on earth. When they see God Almighty became a woman being and walk on earth, preaching to people. Preached unto the Gentiles. Jesus Christ preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world and received up into glory. It was a mystery. But it was God that manifested and did that to us. For us to save mankind. He is the only one that can do it. He couldn't send an angel. Why? Because he is the only one that can, can take that beating. Because God is love. Can be so long suffering that he will allow himself to go through that. It is only God that can do that. A woman being... Not even the prophets could do that. No matter how holy we think we are. Only the Holy Ghost can help us do that. But the Holy Ghost even when he's in the clay, we are we are vessels of clay. He is even not able to control many of us when we are when he's in us. But see, God himself, full of Holy Ghost, the fullness of the God there was in him. Was the only one that can bear the cross and not cause these people that are nailing him to the cross. He was saying, Father, forgive them. He was the only one that can do that. Long suffering, say God is patient and kind. When he described himself to Moses, he said, The Lord, 
the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering. So, if you are talking about how long is long suffering, God is the longest, and He's the only one that can die on the cross for humanity. And that is why He came by Himself to redeem mankind. Long suffering, abundance in goodness and in truth. So, it is God that manifested to save mankind. And now, let me go further and tell you right now the reason why I'm preaching this today is to make you to see that Christ, when He abolished death, He brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. But now, he is that he's able to keep us alive, that we don't see physical death. is the one that says he also can raise, he's going to raise the dead on the last day back to their body. In John chapter 5, he said, I, am, I, I will raise them up at the last day. So, God that can heal, that can raise us up at the last day, the Almighty God that says he can keep us alive, that we never see death. In John chapter 5, verse 1, he can heal your body right now. So, I'm going to pray for you. If you are sick, or you have somebody that is sick, I'm going to pray a prayer and just believe God because we are going to believe His word. Just like we believe the word of God that He is able to keep us alive. Like He said, John chapter 8, verse 61. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Really? Yes, He said it. Am I to take the word of God like that? Yes, take His word like that. And then keep His saying, He said He's able to keep us alive. Just keeping His word, just believing His word. Yes. Now, if he's able to keep us alive, what about this sickness and disease that attack human beings? He's able to heal our body then also. And he's going to heal your body as I will pray with you. You have to believe it. And I'm going to pray. The Lord said as you, as you take this sermon today and use it to pray for the sick. Because the same God that, can, that is going to call the dead back to life is able to heal your body today. If he's able to keep us alive that we never see there, as he said in John chapter 8, verse 61, he's able to keep your body healthy. He's able to heal your body if you are sick and healthy and you are afflicted. And I want you, I'm going to repeat this sermon in so many, several occasions. I want you to go call the sick to listen to it. And I'm going to pray a prayer over you. Go call the sick that you have anywhere to listen to this sermon. As we pray, you believe that Jesus Christ, who is able to raise the dead, who is going to raise the dead at the last day, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, if a man keep my saying, shall never see death, which means he's able to keep our, our body alive that we don't die, he's also able to heal your body right now that is afflicted with sickness and disease. And I'm going to pray right now for you, because he said, this signs shall follow them that believe. This signs shall follow them that believe, and I believe, and you believe with me. And I'm going to just lay my hand upon you by faith right now. You lay your hand upon wherever you have been having ailment. And I'm calling upon Jesus, that name that is above every other name, to touch your body right now. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you have said in your word that I should believe and as you call upon you and you will answer. Father, I call upon you right now, Lord, that by the power of the Holy Ghost, move over everyone that is listening over the radio waves or listening on, the, on, 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 on YouTube or listening through the internet and they are listening to this sermon. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let their body be well. I command their body well. I command the body of this man that is listening to me, the woman that is listening to me, I command your body well. In the name of Jesus Christ. That name is above every other name. That is it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are well. And be well in your body. Be well in your blood. Be well in your spirit. Be well in your soul. Be well in your flesh. In the name of Jesus, from head to toe, from the hairs of your head to the soles of your feet, I command your body well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You feel the impact of this prayer right now. As the Lord Jesus Christ touches you. It is not me that is doing it. It is my Father in me that is moving. He said, the Father is the me that do the works. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one that do the works. Because he has already taken away your diseases. He said, himself took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. He became the propitiation for our sins and he became the substitute for our afflictions. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. So when he received those stripes before he went to the cross, that was for the healing of your body, for the healing of my body. We were healed by his stripes. So be healed and your body be well as I have decreed. Thank you Jesus. That is it. That is it young man. That is it young woman. That is it man and woman. That is it young little child. You are healed. So rise up and begin to walk. Begin to do what you cannot do. Believe it. And Jesus Christ has taught you you are well. As I have decreed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to continue this sermon. And next time we go to replay this over and over again. And you can listen to it over and over again. And call the people that are sick and afflicted. To come and listen to it. And, be, and listen to this prayer. And I agree with that prayer. As I have prayed that prayer over these airwaves. Listen to it. And pray along. And believe it. 
and Jesus Christ will touch them when you bring them to listen to it, and they will be well too. And then let them follow this scripture you are telling them. Christ has actually abolished death. He wanted to keep us alive if you will believe. He said he's able to keep us alive if you will believe. If you keep his saying, and he's demonstrating it right now by healing your body, by restoring your body, and believe it and claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. Claim it in the name of Jesus Christ, and you are well in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I will continue this sermon. Let's go again and see what Christ has said. Hosea chapter 13. The prophecy of Hosea chapter 13. The Lord gave a prophecy through Hosea that he did that he will destroy and abolish death. Hosea chapter 13. Let me read it to you so that you can see that some of these things that have been prophesied by the prophets of old, God started fulfilling it and manifesting it to us through the utterance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because all these things that have been prophesied are just been manifested. They are mostly fulfilled in Christ. Hosea chapter 13, here is verse 14. The Lord was prophesying through Hosea in verse 14. He said, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Who are these them he's talking about? Everyone that believes. You say you look like he was talking to Ephraim, which is the Israelites. Yes, but you can claim the same promise because actually God is not just talking about Ephraim Israelites, he's talking about the people that will believe in him. The people, his people, if you are one of his people, you can claim this promise, and it's actually prophesying of what God will do at the end. And this is what he said: I will ransom them from the power of the grave. That means those that are dead in the graves, God is going to ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. What death of us is talking about? Physical, spiritual, all kind of death. Oh death, I will be thy plagues. Oh grief, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be healed from my eyes. Now God is saying he was going to be the plague to death and it will be the destruction for the grief. What does that really mean? God was simply prophesying that he was going to raise people out of the graves in the end and he's also going to call them back alive. God is prophesying in the book of Hosea chapter 13 verse 14 that he was going to raise the dead at the end. That's when he say, I will, I will, I will, I will be, I will be thy destruction, oh death, I will be thy plague. And that he was always going to abolish death in the end. That was a prophecy right there. And also you see, when Christ came, he was giving us promises. Let me give to you some of those promises so you can see that he that raised us up from the grave is also able to keep us alive. There was a story when the Lord Jesus Christ came to the city of Nain. And the Bible said they were carrying a dead corpse out of the grave, out of the city. To go and bury this boy. And he was the only son of his mother who was also a widow. Now, what did Lord Jesus Christ do? No, no matter what killed the boy, oh, it could be a disease that has been going on, maybe his liver, the doctor might say his liver is destroyed, whatever his many things have happened in his lungs and so on. Whatever happened to his physical body, and they are now is the boy is dead, they are carrying to the grave. When Jesus Christ stopped the procession and showed compassion on the woman. And he called the boy back to life. Do you know that the same power of the Lord Jesus Christ that called and raised that boy back to life healed the body, whatever was the cause of the death. The boy was healed. When he brought the boy back to life and gave him back to his mother, the boy was healed. What am I saying now? What I'm saying is that the same Lord that is able to raise us from the grave, the same power of God that raised us from the grave, the same power of God that say, if a man keep my sin, he shall never see death. He's able to keep us alive and never see death. The same power of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is able to heal your body. And that's why I pray for you. And I'm saying you should believe it that way. Because sin, sicknesses and diseases and death have been dealt with by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are to believe it and claim that promise of full redemption. Redemption from sin, which is by being born again. Redemption from sicknesses. Which is the power he gives to us, they shall lay hands upon the sick that recover. Redemption from physical death. If a man keep my sin, he shall never see death. It's the same Lord Jesus Christ that has the power of all these things. Believe him, and he's able to save your soul and heal your body and also keep you alive that you never see death. And it's coming soon. The rapture is very soon. That is the rapture that's going to make this thing come into manifestation at this end time. When a bunch of saints are going to be disappearing from this planet without seeing physical death. That is coming very soon. If you believe this message of Christ as a break death, then you are a candidate that you will be able to get the faith to disappear when Christ calls us to come up either. I'm going to pray right now. Father, I thank you for this sermon. I just pray that many of God will be understanding it and be able to believe it. Write to us and we shall send you some exhortation. Gospel distribution, post office box 71027, Phoenix, Arizona, 
0302-8508-5050. On the internet, the website is gospeldistribution.org. Gospeldistribution.org. God bless you. See you next time.